This is a little tool that a friend of mine shared with my local ham radio club a few years back. I thought it was ingenious. I made one and it is beautiful. Unfortunately, I couldn't find mine today. It got lost at field day this year. So I just built this one and I'm gonna take you on my little journey of how to build a PL259 installation tool. This is probably one of the coolest little tools you can get, or actually you're gonna make this one. And it probably won't cost you more than 50 cents to make it. This is how I put a PL259 on a piece of, uh, on a piece of heavy coax. For this build, you're gonna need a half inch T connector, a uh, PL259 cover, and some two part epoxy. Assemble your parts. Put your gloves on because you don't want to get burned by this epoxy. And then mix the epoxy up really, really good. Liberally coat the inside of the tee and put the slide cover in upside down. Now, glue the top of it up, get it nice and goopy, and scrape off all the rest. Let it dry overnight. So now, instead of screwing around with the uh, channel locks or a big pair of pliers and trying to get, uh, trying to fight this thing onto your piece of LMR, you can uh, just screw the thing on very quickly, really easily, screw it off, and you're done. Hey, just as a note to you big brain guys, this is a demonstration and I wasn't actually putting together a piece of coax. So don't bitch about my frayed wires and no soldering because this isn't a real cable. Now I get it. There's DMR, there's Moto Turbo, there is uh, Fusion out there, but I'm not using those. I've adopted D-Star. Kenwood has come out with a handheld D-Star radio. And from everything that I hear and see about it, it may be the radio to beat. This is a tri-band radio, 2 meters, 440, and 220. It does D-Star and APRS. It does wideband receive. The thing that I really, really am excited about is the nice, big, bright color screen. Because you guys know how much I love my color screens. And now that we've got another player in the mix, I think the VHS Betamax war is just about over. Let's explain D-Star in 120 seconds. 120 seconds on the clock, there. D-Star is simple in its complexity and very complex in its simplicity. First of all, I can key up my radio on a D-Star repeater and it'll go out to the repeater just locally and I can talk to other users on that repeater just like I would on any uh, on any 2 meter 440 box anywhere in the world. If that D-Star repeater is hooked up to the internet you can also key up this radio and talk on that local repeater. Everybody on the repeater hears you plus everybody on the internet hears you that is plugged into what is called a reflector. Reflectors are nothing more than a, for better lack of, uh, of a term, uh, like a chat room on the internet or a group on Yahoo Groups. Some reflectors are broken up geographically to specific cities, specific areas, specific countries, and some reflectors are broken up by, uh, by interest. That could be anything from emergency nets to Skywarn to a local net. I can talk on a local repeater that's hooked up to a, to a uh, reflector and I could talk locally on that repeater and nobody will hear me on the reflector. So I can use that to talk to a guy across town and if, and if he's got the same settings as me, the guys on the reflectors won't hear us. But I can also use the system to talk to a guy across the country 
or around the world. And with that same breath, two guys, 20 guys, or 2,000 guys can all be on the same reflector at the same time and everybody would be able to hear everybody on that reflector. There's a ton more that I could talk about on D-Star, but there it is in about 120 seconds on the clock. Today I'm gonna to get on my hotspot and I'm gonna make a contact with a friend of mine who runs another YouTube channel across the country called The Comms Prepper. And we're gonna have a, uh, we're gonna have a little QSO on D-Star. K1 DOS, K6 UDA. This is K1DOS Mobile in Springfield, Virginia. How copy this station? Over. Oh, you are 5'9", my friend. Real good copy. Uh, great signal. And I've got all your information coming here on my, uh, on my ID-51, or the ID-5100. This is, Roger that. this is I cool. I have the same operating conditions here. I'm running mobile in the pickup truck with the ID5100, the ID5100 Alpha into a Tram 1181 dual band antenna. And I'm putting out the 50 watts that the radio gives. Oh, real good, real good, Hank. I am uh, I'm actually running the 5100 here locally in the shack right now. Uh, on five watts. And I, uh, I'm running it into a, uh, into a little D-Star hotspot that I've uh, picked up and built. And uh, So I'm controlling it and I can actually uh, just dial in whatever reflector I want to be on and operate there. Well, from Springfield, Virginia to Sacramento, California, we've definitely broken the myth that VHF operations is limited to line of sight communications only. Good deal. Very, very good. All right, Hank, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna jump out here and get back to uh, get back to making some videos. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention all the other ways you could get on D Star besides having one of these. They have devices that plug into your computer that act like a little miniature hotspot repeater called a DVAP, a DV dongle. And then there's the, uh, the hotspots that are run on Raspberry Pis. I have, uh, I've got the, uh, the DV Mega and, uh, and, and I run it in a, in a little enclosure from Harden Power Systems. I'll tell you what, this thing has been running almost flawlessly now for just about two years in my shack. It's always on. I can always turn D-Star on here and I control everything. I don't ask permission from a repeater owner. I don't disturb local QSOs that might be going on on my local uh, repeater. I could turn the thing to whatever reflector I want to go to anywhere in the world and just get on quickly and easily. No fuss, no muss. I'm not creating traffic on a local repeater uh, from a busy reflector like One Charlie, which is an international mega reflector. It is always busy. If you want to talk DX, if you want to talk to the UK or almost anywhere in the world, you get on One Charlie and you're bound to find a QSO there. Some of you guys just absolutely crack me up. I know you got a big brain. You're smarter than I am. You're smarter than the average viewer on this channel. I'm getting these long comments from a couple of you guys that read more like the opening monologue of, from Joey Greco on Cheaters. For some reason, I feel just a little bit compelled to, uh, to explain. I know some of you guys expect like super in-depth reviews of, of, a, uh, pr of a product or, or whatever it is, and you want to know every detail about it. I get it. I get it. That's cool. Here's the problem. This show ain't that. I try to keep everything, how do I say it, short and sweet. It's not like I just set the camera up on a tripod and start operating and everything works out the way it does. No, 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 no. 
In case you haven't noticed, I'm trying to make an interesting video here. Something that's gonna, something that'll just capture your attention for a few minutes and entertain you for a few minutes. So I use multiple camera angles, multiple zooms. I try to find the most interesting shot and something that'll keep your attention for the brief few minutes that we're together. Now, you truly big brain guys will probably be able to look this up or you remember that last Wednesday, Propagation sucks, pretty much like it's been sucking all year. And it's Wednesday. There really isn't a whole lot of ham radio traffic during the day on Wednesday when propagation sucks. Now, I am no Casey Neistat when it comes to making videos. And I am no Dave Kessler when it comes to teaching ham radio. <laughs> I'm the first guy to admit that. And that's why I am so excited to see this guy's video, how he's going to explain in an interesting and fun way how this antenna works. Because obviously he knows how to do it much, much better than I do. Keep hitting that subscribe button. Keep sharing these videos on Facebook, Twitter, everywhere else you could think about it. Let your ham radio clubs know locally where you're at and get more people to subscribe. We're getting closer, much closer to that 5,000 uh, subscriber where I'm giving away this KX2. I'd actually like to give this radio out before Christmas. And I think we can do it. I'm Bob, K6UDA, and I'm out of here. 7-3.